days are never ending When the nights are feeling lonely There's a place that I can go Where the birds are free to roam In the sky, flying high Over fields of green and Where the stars inside the sky Where the last one shining bright Pushing through the storm and night We'll be burning on and on and on Where the stars inside the sky We're the last one shining bright Pushing through the storm and night We'll be burning on and on and on Hello Scorpio this is Inspire 2016 with your weekly tarot reading for the week, commencing the 8th of January until the 14th of January 2018. The first card for you is representing. How do you feel about yourself? Your card is. The Six of Pentacles. If you are the wealthy person, then you have accumulated great wealth and are now in a position where you can offer financial assistance to those in need. Now that you have lived through the darkness long enough to see the inner light, it is time to help others who are not so fortunate. Consider giving to charity or reaching out a helping hand to someone who needs your support. The generosity of the six does not limit itself to money and material things. Giving of your time or your wisdom is often just as spiritually fulfilling as giving away money or gifts, and the intangible gift of your presence is received just as well, if not better. You may also be inclined to make a loan to someone, on the premise that they will eventually pay you back once they are back on their feet. This is a loan built on trust and good faith, knowing that if you give something away, it will come back to you. Remember, though, that this is more about a short-term fix and not a sustainable solution towards self-sufficiency. So, think about how you can financially support your family or friends in a way that encourages them to stand on their own two feet eventually. If you are the beggars in the Six of Pentacles, then you may be the recipient of someone else's charitable activities. This will help you to get back on your feet and to eventually repay the charitable organization or individual, either with your time or your restored wealth. You will also need to identify ways in which you can become more self-sufficient in the long run. The risk of accepting charity is that you become dependent on it and cannot look after yourself. Be mindful that you are not becoming submissive or noticeably desperate as a result of the charity that someone else is providing you. The second card for you is representing, what do you want most right now? Your card is, the Queen of Wands. What do you want most right now is to be bold and courageous in your undertakings and actions. Your creative energies are high and you have a good sense of your life direction. You are highly optimistic, confident and full of ideas that you are ready to implement and share with others. You have an ability to express your passions with great authenticity and courage. The Queen of Wands is a natural extrovert and enjoys being the center of attention. She creates a powerful first impression and is a likable individual who makes friends easily by being sweet, warm and charming. She wants to be known, to be someone. She has bountiful social and professional networks and she draws people to her with her charisma and positive energy. She radiates health and vitality and has an inner vibrancy that fills her with ongoing energy and inspiration. This queen is a natural-born, intelligent leader who actively inspires others. She can be quite the mover and shaker, influencing others through her vision, courage and determination. She instills confidence within you and gives you the power and self-assurance that you can achieve anything that you set your mind to. The negative side to the Queen of Wands is that she can sometimes be stubborn, particularly if she pursues an ambition or goal for too long and burns herself out in the process. Even the Queen of Wands is not invincible, even if she thinks she is. 
at times, she may also be deceptive, overbearing, irritable, righteous and even tyrannical, particularly if you get on her bad side. She also has a fiery, passionate personality with a quick temper. She may be known to get all worked up, yell and scream, and then give you a hug, all within the space of an hour. The third card for you is representing, your fears. Your card is, the six of wands. You are afraid and doubting your abilities and your potential for success. You may feel negatively about yourself and as if you have failed both yourself and others. You are lacking confidence, and need the support and recognition of others to pick you up and give you strength again. You have had a fall from grace and have not received the public recognition you were seeking. You have either received no feedback for your efforts, or negative feedback. You may have expected things would have worked well but instead you are being punished in some way or you are being neglected for your efforts thus far. Now, your confidence has taken a hit, as has your professional reputation or at least your perception of your reputation. If a particular project has not been as successful as you had hoped, you may be no better off moving to a new environment so that you can rebuild your personal reputation and brand, rather than trying to fix something that has already broken. You may be trying to achieve too many things at once and may not be doing a good job at juggling all of these commitments. It may be best to focus on only a few things and do them well. This will help you feel more inspired and motivated about the activities you do commit to. This card can reflect the transitory nature of success. One moment, you are on top of the world because you have achieved great things but then the expectation has been set that you will continue to perform to this level and when you do not, then you are suddenly knocked down and criticized. While victory and triumph feel great at the time, recognize that it is only temporary and you will have to continue sustaining a high level of performance to be acknowledged. The fourth card for you is representing, what is going for you. Your card is, the ten of wands. There would be the completion of a cycle after a period of struggle. You are finally reaping your rewards after investing a lot of hard work and effort. You have fulfilled a creative venture, realized a dream or accomplished a major goal, and now must deal with the consequences of that fulfillment. However, even with the achievement of your goal, there comes with it great responsibilities and commitments. While you have reached a point of completion, you are becoming starkly aware that you must now carry on with the responsibilities you have laid out for yourself, in order to ensure ongoing success. The trouble is, however, that these responsibilities may become too much to bear and you are struggling to let go. It is a bit like the business owner who creates a flourishing business but who is unprepared to delegate some of his, her responsibilities to the staff and ends up working 70-80 hours a week. The inspiration and creativity that was associated with the initial goal or vision rapidly disappears, and everything becomes hard work all too quickly. Thus, it is incredibly important to let go of or delegate some of your responsibilities in order to free you up to still enjoy your life. This is a reminder of how much we take on in our lives and all the extra burdens and responsibilities we weigh ourselves down with. We take on so much, trying to do all the things that need to be done. Thus, this card asks you to stop and examine your current lifestyle or work. Assess which activities or tasks are really urgent or really important, particularly in relation to your broader goals. You may need to employ various time management or prioritization methods in order to determine where best to spend your time and which tasks you can drop. Your goal needs to be greater efficiency, whilst also freeing yourself up for rest and relaxation when you need it. This card can also mean that you are being oppressed by outside sources. You are overworked, overtired and overstimulated. 
you have more on your plate than you can possibly handle and you have taken on too much at this point in time. In an effort to get to the finish line, you have found yourself overwhelmed with the extra responsibility and activity. You need to stop working so hard. If you cannot stop, then conserve your energy and pace yourself. When you are overcommitted everything becomes a strain. The fifth card for you is representing, what is going against you. Your card is, the four of swords. You are feeling restless and wanting to do everything at once. Even if your body is telling you that you need to rest and relax, your mind may be pushing you forward, trying to accomplish a long list of tasks. You may be getting quite sick or stressed as a result, so it is vital that you force yourself to pause and take it easy to ensure that you do not become completely run down and exhausted. You may also be trying to avoid any period of contemplation or meditation on a particular issue because you are worried about what it might bring up. You need to return to the energy of the Three of Swords and confront the pain and grief that exists within your heart. You need to experience that pain as it is preventing you from being able to move on. Once you have experienced it, it will begin to subside and you will be able to live a more fulfilling life. This is also a time of stagnation and a lack of action that is leading to increased frustration. For example, a long-term marriage is no longer progressing and is spiritually and emotionally empty. You may need to take a break from this stalled situation and come back to it when the energy is flowing better. Similarly, you are feeling frustrated with the lack of progress and change in your life. Many things have stood still or have failed to change in the way you were hoping they would. Part of this lack of change, however, is as a result of your passive approach. There may have been situations that were frustrating to you or that you were unhappy with but you may have opted to just sit it out and hope that they would eventually change, rather than taking action to create a more desirable outcome. The last card for you is representing the likely outcome that you may have. Your card is the Three of Pentacles. Ultimately you will experience prosperity and success in your goals, only if you continue to work toward the fulfillment of your dreams and do not allow disillusionment to dampen your enthusiasm, you need to do work that is satisfying to you and that you can be truly proud of. What new beginnings are you experiencing in the material realm? Is there some project or creative venture you have been putting off because of fear of failure? The Three of Pentacles indicates that dreams can be made real with persistence, determination, and effort. The Three of Pentacles may also suggest that you need help to complete your work and can draw on the knowledge and experience of others. It may be beneficial to share your work with a partner but only if they are as conscientious as you. At the core of the Three of Pentacles is the notion of teamwork and collaboration. In the card, we see a young mason working hard on building part of the cathedral. The two monks enter, with their worldly knowledge and spiritual understanding to bring a new perspective to the mason's work. Even though their backgrounds, experience levels and knowledge is very different, they are able to come together to share their expertise in a way that creates synergy and improved results. There is no as and them or any sense of superiority. Rather, each person has something unique to offer and is willing to learn from others involved in the project. Everyone is getting the job done together and is contributing to the group through effective listening and sharing. This is a positive card to see when teamwork, collaboration and cooperation are required between parties with different levels of experience. The Three of Pentacles also points to the importance of feedback. The Mason is open to listening to the monks and taking on their feedback on his progress so far. His primary goal is to do a great job, and he knows that the monks will be able to help him get there. 
He does not take it personally but uses their feedback and input to continually improve in his work. Effective planning, management and organization are also key components of the Three of Pentacles. In order to accomplish significant goals, it is imperative that detailed planning occurs to ensure that all the components are progressing well. This card therefore reflects a time when it is essential to create a detailed plan and to follow a schedule. This is when good project management will pay off. Last but not least, the guidance card for you is the focus. It is time to draw your energies inward. Let go of all things that are superfluous and unnecessary at this time. Focus your attention on the job ahead. Do what is in front of you, no matter how small the task. Clear focus is required. Be mindful to stay in the present. Avoid looking back or too far forward, for it is only in staying in the true present, the now, that the power residing in this sacred journey marker can be used for the benefit of all. Your path is marked with the need to regroup and remind yourself of your goal. Then stay in the present time and do what is directly in front of you. Only one small, focused step at a time will place you at your destination. I hope that you enjoy everything and if you like the reading just please click subscribe and you will get the instant notifications every time we publish a new video right to your uh, YouTube. Thanks.